Great. So I'm Marius, and I wanted to show you a little tool that I've been using recently when teaching, but also learning new languages myself and just having fun with some small site projects. Um, and those are bitmaps. Uh, they they uh, give you a way of generating images and animations without linking any external libraries. All you really need is writing to standard output. So that really works with any programming language you want, but here I'm gonna give you examples in C++. Um, and so first of all, the portable bitmap is just a text file, uh, which starts with the characters P1, then the width and the height of the image, and then for each pixel, either a zero for white or one for black. Um, and you store that into a file with extension pbm. Uh, and on Linux, you might actually be able to just open it this way, open it in a image viewer, or you can use image magic to convert it to a PNG or something else. Um, so a simple program that generates an image of a chessboard uh, looks like this. Uh, we print the header, so P1, width and height, and then for every uh, row and every column, we just print a zero or a one. Um, and with just a nested for loop, uh, we can generate this image of a chessboard. And already in that simple model, we can uh, produce something like the Mandelbrot set. So if you are familiar with this definition, we just iterate um, this uh, uh, complex plane calculation until we either uh, run out of patience or go somewhere out into infinity. Um, and uh, yeah, we just run that again, just a nested loop, printing a zero or a one for every pixel on, this, on, the, on the image. And after running the program and converting it to PNG, we get this. Of course, uh, we can go a bit further, for example, include color. Uh, but for that, we need to switch to the format P3. Um, and the most visible change here is that now for every pixel, we have three numbers. So the red, green, and blue values uh, of each of them. Uh, but also there's this additional value in the header, which gives us the maximum intensity for a pixel. And then all the other values are uh, equally spaced between completely off and completely on. To be honest, I've never really found a use case for this ever being anything else than 255. Um, and uh, yeah, this particular image, uh, and if, you, if you cannot see, would have a vertical uh, red band, then a green band, then a blue band. Uh, but we can use code to produce spoilers. We can use code to produce something a bit prettier. Uh, but it's again the same format, a double uh, nested loop. Uh, and we just print the values of RGB for each pixel. Um, and here we have um, three uh, cosine waves that are scaled and shifted out of phase with one another. So when we generate this image, we get this colorful PNG just in time for the 1st of July. But we can obviously do something smarter, like create a class that uh, stores our image that we can modify and then save it uh, to a file to produce maybe some more complex images. Um, and this literally takes 20 lines of code. Uh, we just need a vector of pixels, uh, a constructor, a method to set value of a pixel, and then a function to actually print out um, our image. And then, yeah, again, just print out the header, print out all the pixels. And with that, we can start creating some primitive shapes. Uh, for example, here, a rectangle um, with just draws a rectangle on the screen. And with a few lines of code, we can create 
our own reproduction of one of the most expensive paintings of all time, Malevich's Black Square. And then finally, why stop at creating just one image? Um, so in this final example, I've moved out all the canvas code into a separate object. Um, and here we have a program that just generates multiple images. We have a single canvas uh, where we first clear the screen, then draw another black rectangle on the screen and save the frame. Uh, what is important here is that the, the file names are in alphabetical order. So I have this function here to pad the frame index with zeros um, because std format is not supported yet. Um, and yeah, this will just generate uh, a bunch of frames. And what you can do then is still just use convert to create a GIF like this by, just by magic. And yeah, this is where the alphabetical order comes in. Otherwise, the frames will be out of order. Or you can use a FFmpeg, which is a bit more complicated, but you can, with this, generate MP4 files. And so here we have a black square moving along the screen. So the question is, how far can you take it? Well, obviously, you can't do anything um, interactive because the whole animation is generated ahead of time. But I have written ray tracers in multiple languages using this. And recently, I've been playing, uh, I've been learning about how the graphics card works. And I've implemented in C++ a program that takes any 3D object and draws it on screen in red with a single light in the upper right corner, like this, all with no external libraries linked to the program, um, just image magic to convert it if you want animations or you can't display uh, PBM and PPM files. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. If you want to see all the examples, I put them up on GitHub so you can see them under this link. Thank you very much.